So this whole endeavor began when I tested my water parameters after being away from home for about two weeks, and long story short, my nitrate levels were much higher than I would have liked them to be. So I decided to sort of come up with a radical idea and build a large hydroponic system that would be able to grow plants and denitrify the system for longer periods of time without maintenance. It all looked simple enough on paper. My first thought, and the design I decided to go with, was a large wooden trough that would hold all of the aquaponic components. This would include the grow bed as well as the drainage pipe leading back to the aquarium. The reason I decided to go with a design like this is because not only would it look clean in my room, but it would also add a second layer of insurance because if the grow beds overflowed, there would be something to catch the water before ending up on my floor. The trough would be about six feet long and protrude from the wall about a foot. I wanted it to hang high up on the wall so that the plants could rain down over time. I finished the trough with a couple coats of satin polyurethane. Since it would be in a high moisture environment, I needed something that would protect it from deteriorating over time. I found the studs in the wall by using a small magnet. The magnet sticks to the nails used to hammer the drywall into the studs, so wherever you find a nail, there's always a stud right behind it. After marking out a level line, I brought the trough in to just give it a dry fitting on the ceiling. I thought it looked pretty good, but I wanted to bring it a little bit higher. My mom was concerned that it would fall on my head while I was sleeping, so I had to convince her that it would be stable enough. No, this cannot be here. How can you sleep on something which will fall onto your head? It won't. So, I mean, what is there here? Is this nice? No, you cannot sit here. I modified some steel shelf brackets to further stabilize the wooden trough. I also had to calculate the weight of the box, including the water that would be inside it, in order to convince my mom of its safety. Once the brackets were finished, all I had to do was screw them into the studs, making sure to keep them level to one another. It's really important that the water bed remains level, because the drain and the input are on opposite sides. Before I could mount the trough, I had to do a couple of things. The first thing was waterproofing the inside of it. To do this, I lined it with a layer of plastic. What I ended up doing was just cutting up a heavy-duty plastic bag. The reason I had to do this was because the trough would act as a second layer against flooding and would at some point in an emergency situation have to hold water. The second thing I had to do was drill the input and output holes that the pipes would go through so that water could travel from the aquarium through the grow beds and then back into the aquarium. Once that was done, mounting the trough was as easy as putting it on top of the brackets and screwing it in. Once the trough was finished, I could shift my attention over to the grow bed and the plumbing. I made the grow bed out of a 5 foot section of vinyl gutter material. I capped off the ends by sealing in end caps with silicone and then drilling holes for bulkheads. This is the input. Then the water flows through the grow bed, out this 3 4 inch pipe and then back into the aquarium. I connected the grow bed to the system with some 3 quarter inch vinyl tubing. Once started, the grow bed immediately began to flood. The issue is that the grow bed just can't handle the high flow system of the aquarium. To fix this, I added a second bulkhead to drain more water, as well as increasing the drain pipe size to 1.5 inch. Then I tested my new drainage system in the shower. While testing, I realized that I didn't want all the flow of the aquarium filter going through the grow bed. I wanted it to act more like a reactor and less like an inline filter component. To do this, I would need to create a way to regulate how much water flowed through the grow bed. I also realized that the vinyl wasn't rigid enough and this was creating inconsistencies in the water level. To fix this, I glued the vinyl with some epoxy to a rigid 2x4 backbone. After that, I attached the final leg of the drain pipe with a rubber gasket, and it was basically done. To get the water flowing through it, I open up the first ball valve, which is the shutoff ball valve, and can isolate the water beds when I don't want to use them. Then I tweak this ball valve until I get enough flow going through the water beds. It looks like the flow regulation is working perfectly. The way it works is that the water comes from the sump, 
and splits at the first ball valve, where some of it goes back into the aquarium and some of it goes to the grow bed. The water flows to the grow bed, through the plants, and then out the drain, then going back into the aquarium. Now that the hardware was done, I can move on to the plants. I decided to use lava rock as a substrate because it's cheap and readily available. As for the pothos itself, I just used the kind that you buy at the hardware store in a dirted pot. I rinsed all the dirt off in a bucket of water and then was left with 10 or 12 stalks per pot. These stalks were planted individually in the grow beds. Some people say that pothos doesn't acclimate well to a hydroponic environment after being grown in dirt, but so far I've seen pretty good growth. Even though pothos is a low light plant, I wanted these to grow as fast as possible. So I retrofitted this shop light as a grow light with two T8 6500K bulbs. I've been experimenting with relatively short photo periods and it's working well. It's been two weeks and the pothos have acclimated well. My plan for the future is to experiment with different photo periods as well as micronutrient and trace element concentrations to see their effects on water parameters as well as plant growth. I'm planning to do this on a four week experimental time frame. In the meantime though, a lot of sprouts have already come up and new leaves are forming on the pothos. To recap the system, water flows from the aquarium down into the sump, where it's mechanically, chemically, then biologically filtered. In the sump, the water is also heated to around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Then a pump sends the water up to a splitter, where some of it goes back into the aquarium and the rest of it goes to the grow beds. At the grow beds, the plants remove the nutrients. The grow bed also acts as a biological filter because the substrate has so much surface area for bacteria to grow on. The whole thing runs at about 450 gallons per hour and it's relatively maintenance free. So that's basically it. I just want to say thanks a lot for watching and I really hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely subscribe if you want to see some update videos on the system or if you want to see some of my future project videos as well. Also let me know what you think down in the comments. This is a learning process for me. so. Whatever you have to say, I definitely want to hear it. Um, with that said, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.